fascism. It's going to be easy to be objective about that one, isn't it? Um, well, the original discussion was uh, whether or not fascism was a form of socialism. Now, I tend to believe that it is not, and not because of the economic model or anything like that, but the underlying philosophy behind the two points of view, which I believe are completely incompatible. Even though you wouldn't think so, because there was a lot of interplay between the two philosophies, but I would say that ultimately, when you get right down to it, um, socialism and fascism are completely incompatible philosophies. Socialism, when you get, uh, again, down to its basics, believes in human equality. It promotes human equality in all of its forms. At least its rhetoric promotes it. It says that its aim is human equality. Fascism, if you get right down to it, says that humans are not equal. That is the ultimate nature of fascism, if you ask me. Uh, the, the political, sociological, intellectual justification of human inequality. All fascist states were hierarchical. All of them said that we do not believe in class conflict. We believe that those who are fit to rule should rule with a sense of responsibility towards their inferiors. If you, I don't know if they would actually use terms inferiors uh, or to their... Um, less capable members of their actual nation. I suppose when it got racial, uh, the only obligation that uh, one group would have towards its racial inferiors was, well, we know what that was. That was the Holocaust. That's why society in most fascist countries was organized along military lines. Um, military ranks uh, were mirrored in the entire political system, right up all the way up to the actual leader. The entire emphasis on all fascist states was the deliberate creation of an efficient human hierarchy. Those who were fit to rule would be allowed to rule. They would do so with a sense of responsibility towards the less capable members of society who would in turn defer to their good judgment. Now, in most societies, there are uh, antecedents to this. In a lot of societies today, uh, this is the way people think even to this day. Um, look at Japanese society. It works that way. Uh, if you look at certain patron-client societies um, where uh, society is not so much based upon equality as it is based upon um, a system whereby there are those who rule and there are those who benefit from the fact that there are natural leaders ruling society. A lot of the Islamic world is run that way and uh, a lot of Latin America is run that way to this day. So all that the fascists were doing was codifying this deliberate sense of human inequality um, into a coherent modern political philosophy. Now that's the sympathetic view of fascism. Now of course what it inevitably degenerates into is the blind cult of authority. In other words, you get posters saying Mussolini is always right, or Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer, which is uh, uh, one people, one state, one leader, and all these glorification of the godlike leader, which was one of the things that I criticized uh, communism for in my previous video. You also got uh, the glorification of force for its own sake. In other words, um, force would be applied to any problem, coercion, and that would solve anything. Um, you got unemployment? Okay, well you threaten the, uh, the property owners to employ more people um, or else. Uh, you got uh, labor problems? Well, you abolish unions and you arrest union leaders and you ship them off to camps. Uh, foreigners get in the way? Well, there's going to be war. And not only that, um, we can use the conquered territory to settle our surplus population, uh, that sort of thing. And that kind of, in a sense, uh, contained the seeds of fascism's ultimate destruction, was the fact that it was inherently aggressive and thus um, inherently uh, unstable, inherently um, 
disruptive to human social, uh, normal human social relations. There was going to be winners and there were going to be losers. War. Um, now whether or not that uh, that is socialism, the, the larger involvement of the state in human society, um, I don't really see that as a hallmark of at least the socialist aims. Um, the, the fascist state is involved in absolutely everything in every aspect of everyone's life, every citizen's life, um, and uh, there is certainly a great amount of government involvement and guidance of the economy. But to me, that's not really socialism. Socialism, again, is about human equality. Fascism is about human inequality. Completely incompatible systems, and that's why they brawled it out in the streets of Europe in the 1930s, incessantly. If you have a system that promotes human inequality, well, guess who's going to be at the bottom? And are these people just going to take that? Are people just going to say, all right, I'll sit at the bottom of society because I'm just a lowly worker and my natural betters are going to rule, it o rule over me? No, I'm not going to take that. And that's why they fought. The argument that says that, so that fascism and socialism are one and the same thing and they actually fought it out because they were rivals to each other, I think is a far too simplistic um, simplistic uh, argument. In other words, there were both fascist groups, but uh, one group wanted to rule. The other group, which was another faction of the same movement, uh, was seen as a threat by the other, and they fought it out in the streets for supremacy. Um, I don't buy that at all. I would say that you've got two completely incompatible movements. Uh, you have human equality versus human inequality. That's why they couldn't stand each other, and that's uh, to this day why fascism is pretty much a dead issue in most societies. Thank you.